What's going on guys, Anthony from Chronometer Check here and today we're gonna be unboxing, there's no box as you can see, but this is an Alpha Chronograph based off of the Rolex Daytona. This is the vintage Rolex Daytona, the original and not the modern Daytona with all the ceramic bezel and uh, sapphire glass and all that fancy schmancy stuff. It's still beautiful, but I actually really, really love the vintage kind of Paul Newman style Daytonas and they're pretty much impossible to get your hands on. Not that I would be able to afford one uh, even if I could get my hands on one because they're they're going for like over a hundred grand this model in particular. This is the, not the Paul Newman. Usually the Paul Newman refers to the uh, cream dial but this is the silver dial. Anyway without any further ado I hope that's the right use of that terminology. I don't know. Let's get into it and here we go. <laughs> Dang that thing just hits you right in the face that dial right away. And so this is a hand wound mechanical watch for pretty good price. So this is under $200, at least at the time of buying this. And we'll talk about the movement in a second. But yeah, let's first take a second to appreciate that really, really pretty silver dials. I don't know what it is, but I've been on a kick for silver dials lately. I just love the combination of silver and black. I, I always have, but the silver dials really lately have been doing it for me. And... Um, yeah, it's really, really nice. Like very, very strong sunburst effect. Some watches have a very subtle sunburst effect. Actually, one second. Okay, so after a quick dip in the watch box, I just grab some other dials that are kind of similar just to give you a little bit of comparison. This is a Seiko 5 that I had on this channel previously. This is the SNK355, also with a silver dial. And just for comparison, and the Seiko Cocktail Time, which pretty much everybody knows and loves. And this is a little bit more of like an icy blue white a dial, but it does have kind of a silver hue just for reference. So anyway, you could see, let's take these two silver dials for instance. You could see the alpha is actually really, really pronounced and like real super duper shiny. And you could just really see that right off. You know what? Let's pull off the sticker. But yeah, you could just see that right off the bat. And I really, really like that about it. It has, you know, it's not an expensive watch. Of course, it is based off of what is now an expensive watch. But uh, yeah, it's not an expensive watch under $200. And that dial is just amazing that it really just pops out at you um the bezel also it's just a black acrylic bezel but it actually looks pretty good you know i was kind of skeptical because it's acrylic which isn't the best uh, the highest quality of material but of course that is what the original you know alpha or excuse me the original rolex daytona bezel was made out of so it kind of stays true to the original and of course even to this day the omega speedmaster still has an acrylic bezel so and uh it's going to get dinged up a little bit more than say a ceramic bezel but that also kind of adds to the charm now speaking of getting dinged up um we have this crystal here which if you take a look from the side it's very very raised and domed and distorted and that is because it is actually an acrylic crystal now this adds to not only the height of the watch but also the vintage charm of the piece but of course it is much much more susceptible to scratching and getting damaged and dinged up and uh i don't know with this piece i'm not really looking to baby it and i'm actually really looking forward to kind of just beating it. I don't know if I'd consider it my beater watch. Uh, we're going to find out, but I'm looking forward to beating it up and kind of just, you know, adding to that vintage charm and characteristic that, of course, the beautiful Daytona has. Um, so anyway, the, another great thing about this watch, aside from the absolute, you know, it is based off of a beautiful watch. So it is a beautiful watch that is relatively well done, at least for the price. But one of the other really, really good things about this watch in particular is the movement. So Let's uh, peel all this stuff off so we can get a little closer look at it. All right, here we go. So we're all unwrapped and good to go. So now the movement inside, let's try to give you a good look at that. Uh, it's actually a Siegel movement. This is a Siegel ST19. Excuse me if I got that wrong. It's just off the top of my head. But a uh, Siegel ST19 movement, which is the same movement that's used in the Siegel 1963 chronograph, which in case you don't know is a... Uh, a pretty good and highly regarded chronograph movement because it does have a column wheel and that's just like it's a pretty good type of movement um especially for this price it's extremely rare to find a fully mechanical chronograph movement for this price especially one that's this good and highly regarded actually the seagull watch goes for about like 250 to 300 dollars and it has the same exact movement now of course you are getting an homage here you're not getting an original design or the you know the extra 
uh, sort of craftsmanship that goes into, okay, I'm not going to say craftsmanship goes into the, the Siegel Chinese watch, but it's a pretty good watch, um, actually. Anyway, that's for a different video. I'm getting off topic. But yeah, so it's actually a really, really good movement and it's decorated really, really nicely. You see it does have that painted blue that is not real like heated screws or anything, it's just painted. But this movement is really, really beautiful. There's a version with a uh, just a solid case back and I don't know why you get that because the movement just looks really, really good and I love that. I love watches with see-through case backs. I don't care, it could be the worst movement ever. Um, you know, except on maybe dive watches where it's a little bit more appropriate to have a regular just a, a standard uh, stainless steel case back, which is a little bit more durable and, you know, better for beating up and less resistant to cracking and everything. In that case, yeah, I guess I would rather have a steel uh, case back if I was planning on using it for actual diving. Not that I would because I've never dived before. Honestly, I would like to. But that's for a whole different video also. But yeah, so pretty good movement. Let's actually see it in action. Now we see this dial over here is again so beautiful. I think the positioning and everything is so perfect. I love the way everything is laid out. And again, it's just like the Rolex Daytona. It's based off a of Rolex design. It, well, it pretty much imitates the Rolex design. Um, so it's hard to go wrong. You know, it is such a popular watch for a reason and it just looks absolutely amazing. So let's give this watch a wine. Again, it is a fully mechanical hand winding watch. So that means it's not automatic like a lot of watches, but uh, this is actually my first time winding it up. So bear with me. You know what? I just realized it's a screw down crown. Okay, there we go. So I pulled out the crown. And now I'm gonna give it a wind. You don't wanna overwind it. So 40 turns the most, that's how much you wanna uh, wind your manual winding watches uh, let's just get that's good for now now we see on the left hand side we have the seconds hand fully automatic just sweeping uh, beautifully that is the second die or the second sub dial over there at the bottom we have a 24 hour sub dial so you could tell if it's you know a.m or p.m and on the right we have the six or 30 minute excuse me 30 minutes uh timer of the chronograph so actually let's test out this chronograph itself so it does have screw down uh, pushers. I actually really, really like the design of pump pushers, to be honest. I guess it just adds to the vintage charm for me, but screw down is a little bit more, uh, sort of more modern slightly and a little bit upgraded. Anyway, let's try out this chronograph. Uh, okay. So nothing's happening. Oh, there we go. Now that I push it down, I felt such a strong, kind of satisfying click. It's not like some watches you just push a button and you don't really feel anything, but this is a really, really tactile click. We see the seconds hand is smoothing sweep or smoothing sweeply. It's sweeping smoothly, fully mechanical. This is not a hybrid quartz movement like some other chronographs. Press it again to stop it. And then once it's stopped, we can press this to reset. And you see how the, the second hand just snaps back because it is a mechanical movement, whereas some you know quartz mechanical or mecha quartz movements for chronographs will just rotate all the way around, takes a long time but this is just so smooth. Okay, yeah, it takes a little bit of force to push it down, which I kind of am getting used to. I never owned a uh, fully mechanical chronograph, so this is new for me. So yeah, that's really nice, really satisfying, really clicky. So you see the Alpha logo at the top, that's honestly my least favorite thing about this watch. I, <sighs> the logo is not my favorite. Um, but whatever, not that big of a deal. Alpha 1993, mechanical chronometer, which is again, something pretty weird because this is not a chronometer certified watch. That's kind of a term used to describe a certain level of uh, you know the timekeeping and, and just the, the standard of the watch. And it's just like a chronometer certification that a lot of higher end luxury watches have. And this definitely is not chronometer certified. And that would bother a lot of people, but because it kind of matches the channel name, I'm a little bit more okay with it, honestly. I don't like it there in the first place, but because of the channel name, I could kind of, you know, I can make that association kind of forcibly, like, but it's kind of cool either way. Um, it does say at the bottom, chronograph at the bottom in red right there, right above the middle subdial, which is kind of cool. It just adds a nice little, very subtle pop of color you won't really notice. Um, so yeah, we pretty much covered almost everything about the watch, except for the bracelet, which is, as you'd expect, just pretty terrible. Honestly, I could feel it already, feel super light, flimsy. I'd be surprised if it's solid. I, 
I really doubt it's solid. It feels super jingly, but of course the original Rolex Daytona was also just jingly and terrible. It really, really was. It was not the type of, you know, quality of bracelets that Rolex puts out now by any means. But yeah, so I actually haven't worn it, so I can't tell you. Let's throw it on the wrist just for argument's sake. I definitely will have a full review going over specs and how it's been doing and stuff like that. But wow, this is, this is really gorgeous. Now I do have a couple of straps over here that uh, I was planning on throwing on this watch eventually to give it a shot and I will have those in a full review. You know, these are, it is uh, super hot today in New York City, so it's a little bit warmer. I'm trying to get some warmer straps. We have some NATOs and we have a leather rally strap that I think is going to pair absolutely phenomenally with this watch. I really do though want a replacement stainless steel bracelet because I think this watch looks amazing on the bracelet, but I'm just not a fan of this quality. I could tell already it's just, it's not gonna do it for me. It has, you know, stamped clasp and it's just, eh. eh. I love bracelets, especially on certain watches like this, but I'd rather wear a strap than a crappy le a crappy bracelet. But if I could find a, a solid bracelet that actually replaces and fits on this watch, I would definitely buy it and you know have the option to switch it out. So, yep, that's pretty much it for the Alpha 1993 Daytona homage with the silver dial. And yeah, Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for all the support recently. You guys have been just absolutely killing it. Uh, we hit 50 subscribers recently, which I know is nothing in terms of the watch world and uh, YouTube in general. 50 subscribers. People get that times a gazillion each day. But to me, it really means so much. I do appreciate each and every, every one of you. Uh, if you do, you know, if you're new to the channel, please leave a comment down below. Say what's up. Maybe tell me your favorite watch. And uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime because, you know, a lot of bigger channels... It might be too big and, and just too, uh, it's too time consuming for them to reply to all thousands of comments, but I will literally respond to every single comment. I always do just because I love talking to you guys. I love getting to know you guys. So put your favorite watch down below. Let me know if you're a new subscriber and uh, subscribe if you do want to be a new subscriber and to see more videos in the future. But anyway, yeah, don't forget I will have a kind of more in-depth review soon and on the blog chronometer check.com and check that out for some other watch reviews also so yeah thanks for watching once again this has been anthony with chronometer check appreciate you uh drop a like if you did enjoy that's about it